Brothers and sisters, today's gospel has so many intriguing points that we could focus on. For instance, Mary Magdalene is said to alone see the stone move from the tomb and automatically assumes without looking in that Jesus' body has been taken. The other three gospels have her, along with the other women, find the empty tomb and then be confronted by angels who tell them what happened. The beloved disciple, who's not mentioned in the other three Gospels, sees the linen cloths lying on the ground, but does not go in. Why? He finally goes in after Simon Peter arrives, and when seeing the cloth that had been over his head rolled up on its own, suddenly he believes. Believes what? What can we possibly garner from a rolled up cloth? Luke is the only other Gospel who mentions the linen cloths which are discovered by Peter, but not the one over his head. Then the last line says, Till this moment they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Wouldn't you expect it to be that they failed to understand the words of Christ, who had told them so many times, rather than Scripture? We see, brothers and sisters, in the resurrection account by John, that he omits much of the detail that the other three Gospels include, and then adds some unique material even though we have small elements in common, such as Luke's short mention of the linen cloths. So what then is John trying to communicate to us that the other three Gospels aren't or haven't? Well, unfortunately, we can't ask him, but we may be able to gather some insights simply from what he is saying. As I only have limited time, we can't examine this account in detail, so I intend to focus today on the role of Mary, the one chosen to witness the resurrected Christ first, and Peter, the one chosen to lead the church. In John's account, Mary is said to go to the tomb while it is still dark, as opposed to dawn mentioned in the other Gospels. It seems John wants to emphasise the great eagerness Mary had to attend to the Lord. She couldn't wait for the sun to come up to go to the tomb of her beloved. Curiously, John omits mentioning the other women, even though they must be there, as Mary says, we don't know where they have put him. John, it seems, wants all the focus to be on Mary. We know from Matthew's and Luke's account that Mary is one of the women who provides for and travels with Jesus and the disciples. Even though she was freed of demonic possession, she must have had reasonable wealth to be able to support so many. Reading between the lines, we can see the great love she had for Christ. In response to this great love, she's gifted with a stupendous gift. She's the first to witness to the resurrected Lord. A woman, brothers and sisters. She was first even ahead of the twelve disciples chosen to lead the church. That is, Peter and the remaining apostles. Interestingly, while Matthew, Mark and Luke have the angels telling Mary to go and tell Peter what they told her, In John's account, on finding the stone rolled away, she immediately goes to tell Simon Peter on her own accord. It is not Mary, the mother of Jesus, nor anyone else, but the one that the Lord Jesus had chosen as the leader of his church that she goes to. Shifting the focus now to Peter, we see even the beloved disciple, who we presume to be John, is found waiting for Peter before entering the tomb. Here again we see respect shown from one apostle towards the one chosen as leader of the apostles. Brothers and sisters, six years ago we had screening in the cinemas a movie on Mary Magdalene. An opinion piece on the ABC News website at the time stated, It is true that the film makes somewhat erratic use of the New Testament, both in its presentation of Magdalene and of other characters in the story. Towards the end, for example, there is an implication that Magdalene and the church stand on opposite sides, the one in sympathy with Jesus' teachings and the other anxious to build a self-glorifying edifice on his assumed identity. This is unfortunate, as the New Testament itself is quite clear about the priority and identity of Magdalene as a key disciple, witness and leader in the early church, without seeing her in opposition to others. Quote, unquote. As the ABC opinion piece suggests, there is no suggestion in any of the Gospels of opposition between Mary and the other women disciples. The first witnesses to the resurrection and the apostles, all men chosen to lead the church. 
In fact, brothers and sisters, we see in John's cut-down version of the resurrection account two elements of the church, the mystical and the hierarchical, working together in unison for the same goal. God chose from all eternity to inform the mystic, Mary Magdalene, a woman, and she, in obedience to the hierarchy that the Lord also established, immediately defers to Peter. Mary and Peter both loved Christ and were both gifted with roles similar yet distinct in the witness and proclamation of the good news. So let us all, women and men, lay and clerical, continue to proclaim our resurrected Lord using our common baptismal gifts as members of the royal priesthood of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ.